Hello, I'm Pastor Craig Miller at Alhambra First United Methodist Church. As we move into this new way of being church, I'm going to be using this time a little differently than the standard sermon. Instead, I'm going to be telling you different stories or sharing key ideas about the Christian faith. So to start off, I want to talk to you about the story of St. Patrick. One of my favorite books is How the Iris Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill. In the beginning of the Dark Ages, in the late 4th century, the Roman Empire collapsed. Everything that had worked before fell apart. Plagues, war, and marauding gangs of thieves threatened everyone's way of life. Civilization itself was at risk. In the book, Cahill tells the story of Patricius, a 16-year-old boy who was born in England and raised as a Christian. One day he was kidnapped by Irish pirates, put on a boat, and sent from England to Ireland, where he was sold into slavery. For six years he was a slave to Irish farmers, where his most important task was watching over sheep. He spent many endless nights as a shepherd in the hills, praying for his return to his family and looking for a miracle. One night he had a vision of a ship, and he fled from his slave masters and made his way to a harbor where he found a ship that was willing to take him to England, where he got back his freedom and was reunited with his family. Because of his miraculous escape, he dedicated himself to the church and became a priest. After many years of service, he convinced his superiors to allow him to return to Ireland as a missionary. So Patricius, who we now know as St. Patrick, returned to Ireland and shared his faith in such a dynamic way that people turned from their evil ways and gave their lives to Christ. As people looked for ways to follow Christ, St. Patrick established monasteries whose main task was collecting and copying ancient manuscripts from Greece, Rome, Bibles, and early Christian writings. Thus Cowhill's title, How the Iris Saved Civilization. As Europe was falling apart, the Irish preserved the great writings and books that were at the heart of the Western civilization and the Christian faith. Cahill says, But the Irish gave Patrick more than a home. They gave him a role, a meaning to his life. For only this former slave had the right instincts to impart to the Irish a new story, one that made new sense of all their own stories and brought them a peace they had never known before. Ephesians 5, 8-11 says, For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. I love how Cowhill says that St. Patrick gave the Irish a new story. And that's where we are today. We are writing a new story. And we are called to be the church in a different way, but no less faithful in all that we do. Our scripture says to be a light, that the light shines out of the darkness, that each of us are to be a light to those around us. I pray that as we move into the days ahead, that you'll be full of faith and hope, and you will know that Christ is with you, and that you will continue to support and love your neighbors and all who are around you, so they may know the great love and compassion of Jesus Christ. One of my favorite hymns is Be Thou My Vision. It was translated by Elizabeth Mary Barn from the original Irish back in 1905. And it's just amazing to hear these words and how powerful they are for us today. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light.